So this Thursday is Thanksgiving. It also happens to be my birthday. So I thought I'd do something a little bit fun, a little bit different this week and share my best and worst theater experiences. We're doing story time today. So let's talk about it. Hi, my name is Sean, and I love to talk about movies way too much, but today we're not actually talking about movies, we're talking about the movie-going experience. It could be an awesome movie, it could be an awful movie, but we're talking about what happened while at the theater. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comments section. Share your best and worst theater experiences, whatever that means, the stories that happened while watching a movie or a movie that was just so cool to see in a theater that you will always remember the experience of watching that movie on that particular day. Before I go into story time, this video is brought to you by my supporters over on Patreon. Every month they submit ideas for a video and then they vote on them. And I thought this one was a fun one to do this particular week since it is my birthday in a couple of days. There's a weekly q and I post some exclusive of videos, some videos early. If you support me at a certain level, you can get your name on the end card. At a certain level, you can even do a monthly 30 minute long Google Hangout with me. So if you're interested, you can check out the link below in the description to see if it's right for you. With that said, let's get started telling some stories. I'll kick things off with actually the first memory I have of going to the movies. It's not the first movie I saw. I believe that was uh, Oliver and Company. And then I know so I saw Batman 89 before I saw the movie I was about to, about to tell a story about. But so in summer, of 1989, my mother, sister, and I were driving from Texas to California. I was born in California. We moved to Texas the year before. So we were driving back to California to just visit everybody, the obvious vacation. And on our way out there, we stopped in Arizona or maybe New Mexico. I've told I always forget which one it is. Uh, we stopped in, it's one of those two states in some small town that had a one theater one screen movie theater and we stopped at it and the movie they were playing was Star Trek V The Final Frontier. Now this movie doesn't have the best reputation but we are Star Trek fans in my family. We went to Star Trek conventions all throughout the 90s. So the Star Trek movie's playing so we went to go see it. But we go to this theater and in order for them to play the movie they had to sell 20 tickets for the film. And if they didn't sell 20 tickets then movie doesn't play. So we buy our three tickets, we sit down. There's a pretty cool little theater. It was like there was a lower level and then there was like a balcony looking down. It was a pretty neat little theater to see, see a film in. And we're just sitting there waiting, counting as people come in, one, two, three, doing that. And they did get up to 20, so we did get to see Star Trek V, The Final Frontier at this very odd, beautiful theater in either Arizona or New Mexico. I've also had a couple stories. I wouldn't call them good or bad theater experiences. It's just kind of funny where fights kind of broke out in the movie. Went on to go see the new Power Rangers movie that came out a couple years ago. I don't know what happened, but in the middle of the film, I guess these two guys got amped up over all the Power Rangers action or something, and they stood up and they're like, don't you do it. They start yelling at each other, pushing each other in the middle of the movie, and you just hear people go, like, someone say, really? What are you doing? Watch the movie. And they kept going for a little bit longer and then finally they calmed down, but they didn't even move away from each other. And there were seats everywhere. They could have spread out, but they stayed sitting next to each other. So I thought that was funny. And then another one, I think back in 2001, I went with some of my buddies to go see the movie O, oh, which you probably haven't even heard of. It's kind of like a high school rendition of Othello. So it has all of the Shakespearean drama and deaths and betrayal, except it's in a, a high school. So I went with my buddies and we were all smart Alex, kind of jerks, obnoxious. We were very obnoxious moviegoers at this point in time. I did not have proper etiquette. And we thought the movie sucked. <laughs> it's just so over the top in the melodrama. And so we're just cracking jokes the whole movie, like clueless teenagers, not thinking of anybody else, that someone else might be enjoying the film or anything like that. I mean, really bad, bad, bad behavior. It, like looking back on it, I was like, oh, that wasn't good. That wasn't good. But at the time, it was so much fun to just like just rip on this movie while we're watching it. And then the credits start rolling and we're like, ah! Oh! laughing at it, we stand up and the people behind us are furious with us. And one of my friends is like, what, it was a crappy movie. What are you getting all worked up about? They're like, well, cause I care about this movie. And then it's, someone in the mix like threw down something like, they knew someone that had like, committed suicide. So it was very personal to them. And they got like very like, okay, whoa. 
That escalated really fast. We're just immature teenagers watching a movie. We didn't like it, so we were acting immature. And they're like getting actually mad and start like yelling at us. And one guy in the group, uh, Joey Halbert, steps up and he's like, dude, like I get it. Like I've gone through trouble. Like we're just, we didn't mean anything by it. And he's like trying to like stop the fight from breaking out or someone to punch me in the face or something like that. And so, I mean, it was as tense of a movie theater experience as I've ever had because we were awful. We were really awful and actually offended someone with not, we weren't just annoying. We actually hurt their feelings because they took the movie as a little bit more serious than we took the movie. And luckily, Joey Halbert stepped in to save us and stop the fight from breaking out. All right, so that's some movie stories. Let's move on to my good and bad experiences. Oh, uh, let's kick things off with the good experiences because I think the bad ones are a little bit. I don't know, funnier at times, so I'll try and end with my funniest story that I've got. So, these are in no particular order. One of the ones I've always said about some of my best experiences in the theater was seeing Fast Five. I wasn't really a big fan of the first four movies. I just thought they were kind of dull. Um, I mean, as some of the, like I didn't, like I couldn't watch them, enjoy them, but they weren't movies that I just loved when they first came out. And then my wife's a little bit more into cars than I am. And then this one looked like they're kind of amping things up, doing it a little bit better this go around. And so we went to go see it on a date night at the midnight showing. So this was nowadays they do the night before early showings at like seven o'clock. But that's pretty new. That's only like the last five years before that. It, they do it at midnight. Like you're literally there. 12.01 is when they start showing it. So it's technically on the day of release. So we're at the midnight showing. We show up early so we can get a good seat. And because it's a Fast and the Furious movie, midnight showing. And we went to like the good theater in town with massive screen. And the whole parking lot is jam packed with just muscle cars and people that want you to look at their car and be like, oh, that is so cool. And so it's like a car show before the movie starts. We're just looking around and people are like doing circles in the parking lot and speeding by. I guess we could have been killed or something like that. So I guess maybe that added to a little bit of the fun. Just like immediately, we're not even inside. We don't even have our popcorn yet. And we're amped up on like, this is just a fun environment to see this movie. So it wasn't IMAX, but it was XD. So a massive screen, incredible sound system, very stadium seats that went very high up. And we had them right in the middle of the theater. So we're sitting there in this amped up theater because everyone is pumped to be there. We all saw the car show before we walked in. And I'm not sure exactly what happened in the story that, that unfolded. But like I said, it's very like heavily stadiumized seating. And somebody goes running down from like the top and there's a little rail. Uh, you walk in on the right or left as you normally do with stadium seating. And there's a rail for the little area where you can look down. This guy runs charging down the steps and jumps over the rail from like 20 feet up and just like we're all just watching like what's this guy doing and he just jumps off the edge and you hear the whole theater go whoa did that guy just do that and like he was fine he didn't hurt himself and so the movie hasn't started and we've had a car show we've had a stunt show with some crazy like we don't i don't even know what guy that was i didn't see him walk back in but we all just saw this guy just do this crazy stunt in front of us and then we watched the movie and that is a great movie to see in a theater of people amped up to see it at late at nighttime um, that, you know, after a car show, after a stunt show. So it's just a ton of fun to watch the movie. Very cool experience watching it. Next on the list, I'll just go with Avengers Endgame. Not the first time I watched it, which was cool in and of itself, but the second time I watched it, opening night, first showing I could get, and I went with kind of a row of my friends and, um, so I went to go, and my like, buddy Andy, who's been in some of my videos, he was there, and my wife was there, and she hadn't seen it before. So everyone I was there with hadn't seen it, of course. I'd seen it at the press screening a couple days before. And so think about how cool that's been, like being there opening night, the most excited people to watch Avengers Endgame. I mean, a film of a lifetime type. There's not a lot of movies like that uh, as a cultural event. And you get to that third act, or even at the beginning of it, you're at the still in the first act and they go and confront Thanos and what happens and the theater goes, oh, and I'm able to watch their reactions. And then as 
especially when you hit that third act and Captain America. You, like I know it's about to happen. So I, I just turn like this and I just start watching my friends and my buddy, Andy, I did a prediction video with him. And he said, Captain America, he's going to move near, He's going to hold it and look over and just watching as he's in his chair, like shaking and then like stands up, yeah! just cheering and just getting to enjoy it with other people. That was so cool. And then the portal sequence happened and like my wife's crying next to me. And so that for me, just, there's those experiences that you only have in a few places that only can happen a cup like a few movies ever can have that shared experience of we're watching this kind of important pop culture event together and they're experiencing it for the first time, but I get to watch them experience it for the first time. It's also pretty cool that one because um, it's the only time I've ever been recognized when going to the movies. Um, in a movie theater, and two different people in the theater, uh, like, like, hey, enjoy your videos. Like, oh, very cool. Like, I've been recognized in different places, even at movie theaters, but never just going to the movies, bought, bought a ticket. Like at press screenings, I've, it's people have seen me, but I actually just going to the movies. This was the only time it's ever happened. It was pretty cool that it was Endgame of all movies. I guess it makes sense, but of all the ones that happened, it was Endgame when it happened. Final one that was just awesome. Co very cool experience. This was about a year ago. I don't need to tell you when it was. When the Meg came out. A week before the Meg came out, actually. Um, I had just started to get some traction with my channel and got added to some press, press lists. And within the first few days of being added to this list, they're like, hey, we're showing the Meg on a lake. Do you want to go see that? My wife loves shark movies. Just loves shark movies. Jaws is her favorite movie. Bad shark movies like normal people very much enjoy Jason Statham and his shtick. And so um, the idea of Jason Statham battling a, a Megalodon sounds pretty amazing, especially out on a lake. And so we said yes to it. So I actually, I vlogged the whole thing. I'll try and remember to put a card up here. And so it's kind of tracking the car ride there and everything we get there. And they had inner tubes and went out and just very, so memorable, very cool. And, um, even just as a professional thing, that's the day I remember meeting a bunch of the PR people with a it's Fonz PR. But that's the day I remember meeting them. And they're like, since I work for myself here at my home doing YouTube stuff, they're kind of like my coworkers of sorts because I see them once a week, well, every couple of weeks um, for press screenings. And that's when I met a whole bunch of them. So of the days to like have a very cool experience, very cool date night, get to see a Big, ridiculous Taco Bell movie, as I call them, junk food cinema that are just fun. You know they're not good for you, but you enjoy them anyway. Perfect environment for it. And I got to meet a bunch of people that I've been working with for over a year now. So that was very cool. All right. From there, let's move on to my worst cinematic experiences. So uh, I'll move, I'll try and make these ascending in their ridiculousness. So the first one I'll go with was a couple years back, went to go see Atomic Blonde. And this is like a classic, annoying movie experience. But it's a press screening. I wasn't on the press list. I waited. You have to, my buddy got some public passes. So we waited in line for like three hours, got in. But it's, it's Atomic Blonde. If you don't know what this is, it's like the female John Wick, Charlize Theron. It's directed by the guy that ended up doing Hobbs and Shaw, Deadpool 2. And he was the second director on John Wick. So it very much was, let's do John Wick, except with Charlize Theron. So people being shot in the face, brutally murdered. Um, like there's all these shots of Charlie's Thrown like sitting in her bathtub in the nude, drinking hard liquor, lesbian sex scenes. Very much an R-rated movie. And it's a press screening. The press, like this is for a patch of the people there. This is their job is to watch this, the movie. That's why the screening is happening. And someone brought their screaming toddler or baby. I don't know how old it was. And so... Very early on, you just started ah, ah, crying stuff. And you're like, what was it? someone brought their baby to this movie? What are they thinking? So then a few more minutes go by and ah, and about halfway through the film, baby is just freaking out, screaming for 10 minutes and they never leave. They never take the baby out of the movie. It's screaming at a press screening. This baby, like, just shooting people in the face and then banging everybody. Multiple senses of that word that she can find. 
and a baby toddler person is just screaming and crying the whole time. And so after about 10 minutes of it, my buddy, who's a lot more confrontational than me, he literally stands up. Of all the people here, my the guy I, that brought me stands up, turns around and goes, get that baby out of here and screams that at these people. And it got a little bit better. I don't think they ever actually did take the baby out, but I'm trying to imagine taking your baby to a press screening, like it's their profession for an R-rated movie. I, that's It's pretty common for the press screenings to have bad audiences because that it is people that just want to see a movie for free so they just take the whole family no matter what it is and gets awkward next one same exact kind of scenario same friend invited me to a press screening at the same theater might have been in the exact same screen for jupiter ascending and this is before my channel even started this is uh, what about a year before my channel started and New Wachowski's movie, sci-fi, so I'm pretty pumped to go see it. He gets me in, wait in the line, sit down, and it's in 3D, important detail. The movie was out of focus the entire film. From being like the whole film, it's out of focus. And so it's this sci-fi movie with these sweeping shots, quick moving action, and 3D glasses on, so those, immediately can just kind of make your eyes a little bit funky, but then it's all out of focus. And so you the whole, and they're trying to fix it. So people keep complaining. My buddy, same guy that yelled, get that kid out of here. He gets up and he goes and complain, like, it's out of focus. You got to fix the movie. And so they keep trying to fix it. So then it's doing the in and out of focus thing and do this stuff the whole time while you're wearing 3d glasses, while things are moving around and it just kind of like makes you nauseous the whole film. It's like, oh, what is going, what is this? And then add to that, it's a movie that it's saving grace was the visuals and the action, because they're very, of course, good with visuals and the action. And it was all in focus, you couldn't see it. So then you're just left with the campier aspects that maybe if I rewatched it in a better frame of mind, I would enjoy it more. But a lot of people are like, this is a weird movie. This is not working very well. So that, that was a, my, my next to last really bad theater experience. And that was, that one was pretty frustrating because it was like you, when you feel actually physically ill because of the way they're presenting the movie, not cool. Final story of the day, went to go see, uh, whatever the insidious is that came out January of last year's skeleton key or something like that. A January horror movie, which tend to not be very good. And they attract a specific crowd of people that are not the best audiences. So I show up and this is kind of, this is early in my channel. It's kind of really before things really took off, but I was at that point in time where I was about to take off. I could see the potential. And so I'm working really hard to be diligent and getting my reviews out, my rankings out. So for this one in particular, I'm seeing it Friday, uh, uh, Thursday night. I've got to go watch it shoot my review, edit it, and I want to post it before I have to go to work, and I had to go to work at 7 a.m. the next day. So, like, taking watching the movie very seriously, and sit down, second row. The row in front of me is a bunch of <laughs> douchebag high school guys watching porn. <laughs> like, they're literally in the theater like, hey, check this out. Like, what? Like, we're in a movie theater. What are you guys do? like? What is this? Like, <laughs> look at her <laughs> passing their phones around. Like, oh, the, what? I, certain things I just can't relate to. Sitting in a movie theater with your buddies, unconcerned about everyone else, just passing porn around on your phone. I can't relate to that thing. <laughs> Spirits. I was obnoxious. We started off with a story about me being obnoxious, but it wasn't anything like weird like that. And so right off the bat, it's weird. Then the movie starts. They are the obnoxious people like, like I was before. They kind of calm down. They're not too bad the first half of the movie. Halfway point happens and a girl gets kind of kidnapped or something like that. And so she's like basically like tied down to a table. And girl has some curves to her body that these guys found desirable. The movie's not super exploiting her. It's nothing like that, but she's wearing a like a tank top or something like that. And every time they'd show her on the table, it brought attention to, to part, certain aspects of her body. And so as soon as this started, every time it would cut to a shot of her, I heard some noise right in front of me. Like, what, what am I hearing right now? Is someone's phone going off? Is that their alarm? Like, what is that? 
And then two minutes later, cuts back to this shot of her. And then I hear the same thing. It sounds like the exact same thing. So it must be like a ringtone. Like, what is that? And then each time it happens, it's a little bit louder. Like, what? what is going on? So several minutes into this, cuts back to her. I'm like, this is, every time it cuts to her, I'm putting the pieces together. Like, there's something going on up here. The, finally, they, the guy is playing something on his phone. It's like, what, what is he, why is he playing on his phone? And happens, he goes full volume on his phone. And it's something like something about him being aroused. It's, it's some meme clip and every time this girl appears it's like him playing this thing to his buddies and they're <laughs> giggling to themselves as they very loudly um make this crass joke for the whole theater I'm like what is going on so i'm i'm not a very confrontational person i don't like to get in the middle of things and i don't i'm I, like i need to review this movie for tomorrow and i do a ranking the next day so i don't want to miss the third act of the movie, like this is the part that you can't miss. So I keep thinking, okay, they'll, they'll, they're gonna be done. And then they weren't. And then it kept going and it kept going and it kept going. And so it's one of those ones that I look back and I was like, I wish I had just like stood up and be like, guys, knock it off, like yelled at him. Or when the movie ended, picked a fight with him. I could have been the angry person to like book in my stories of the day. I could have been the person that was offended. Like, how dare you pollute this theater with your disgusting filth? And like, I could have done something like that, but um, instead I just kind of let it play out. I wimped out. And even though I'm sure I could have taken at least one of them in a fight or two of them in a fight, they went away with it. But yeah, just, just literally passing porn around and literally like playing crass memes porn <laughs> what are, what are you guys doing so anyway that's story hour for today some some background on my experiences with movies some good stories some bad stories those are my stories. Thank you guys so much for watching. Share yours down below in the comment section. Remember to check out that link for Patreon to see if it's right for you and keep talking movies too much.